Welcome, Hello, church. Hey, we are so glad to join you at oh, our online campus actually today. Actually pumped. It's Megs and Oz with you for an awesome Sunday together. Hey, woo, and woo, whatever woo. platform you're joining us from, if it's Facebook or mm. if it's YouTube, we would love to hear from you. So why don't you jump That's on our it. chat yes. at hopeyouc.com. TV. For sure. And tell us where you're joining from, what your name is, and what beverage you have with you today. It's great to have a beverage whilst mm. you're watching online Oh, church. I love a good long black with church. It's so good. What right. would you be having? I'll be having a blue Powerade today. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Pump it up. Ready for the worship. <laughs> That's great. And our prayer team, church, are ready and available yeah. to pray with you. So why don't you click that link in the chat for any of your prayer mm. needs. We are here to do this journey together today for an awesome Sunday. Yeah. Woo. It's going to be good. What's happening, Max? Mm. Tell us what's going on. There's so much happening. But this week, we have launched Can We we're Pray For You? That's right. As we're in our Lent journey in the lead up to Easter, we are coming together as a church to pray for our community. And through that, we've got our weekly devotionals, our daily Bible reading plan as we go through the book of Matthew. And we encourage you, church, take this question to your community. Can we pray for you? You know, our Can We Pray For You outreach steps are purposefully easy. Yes, They're they simple. are. They're so Super good for easy. all of us to get involved. That's right. 5105 letterbox drop in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Just praying over postcodes. That's um, right. And life groups partnering together to pray over a common prayer list which is to pray for the people you want to see saved. That's right. You know, Meg's life groups, just speaking of life groups, yes. is the heartbeat yes. of our church. We believe they in life groups. That life groups are our life boat. boat. Oh. You got there. I thought you almost did. <laughs> we do life in our but life hey, group. Meg, That's how right. How are we able to join a life group? Yeah. So there are so many ways um, and different life groups that actually you can be a part of. We'd love you to jump on to our website, have a look on there, or you can email us at talktous at hopeyc.com. We'd love to get you better connected and just deeply in community because that's exactly what we're designed to do. You know, Manx, what I love about our church is we are always growing and specifically yes, when we, we grow in our young families. Yay. You know, baby dedications is something that we do and we value so much. That's right. Because we come together as a family, mm. as, as the body, as the church, yes. to just encourage and be with each other as we do our parenting journey. That's right. right? Amen. Yeah. So Amen. if you <laughs> wish to be involved or even register for the next few baby dedications, why That's don't you right. pop into your local campus to the concierge desk where you'll be able to register. That's right. We'd love you to get involved with that. Church, we want to say a huge thank you to those who regularly give and sow into this house. We are thankful for your faithfulness and we want to encourage you to continue to just pour out all of your life, all of your heart, giving, finances, time, energy, relationships into the kingdom of God. If you would like to give today and join us in that, you can follow the prompts in the chat, click the button, jump onto our app or onto our Hope You See website. We thank you for your continued generosity. Well, church, why don't you position your heart mm. and prepare your emblems as we um, share communion together. Yes. Hey church, what an honour today to gather around communion and express our thankfulness to God together. And if you haven't yet prepared your emblems, I just encourage you to go and grab them now and uh, run back and join us in communion. I want to start today by reading 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. And it says there, I pass on to you what I have received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after the supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. You know, today as we partake in communion, we're actually announcing the great victory that Jesus won on the cross for us. And I love what the first Christians called this time of communion because it was known as Eucharist. Now, I'm no Greek expert, so please forgive me if my pronunciation was wrong now. But from my study, I understand that Eucharist, it comes from the word Eucharista, which means thanksgiving. And I love that thought that communion is a time of thanksgiving, a time when we can thank God for all Jesus has done for us and the victory that he won on the cross over sin and sickness for us. 
You know, the first church, when partaking in communion, they understand, they understood that this was a time to praise God for all that Jesus had done for them. A time where we proclaim to all people and the powers of darkness that we have victory because of what Jesus has done for us. It's a time of celebration. In communion, we give thanks and we worship our victorious Savior, Jesus Christ. He who won it all for us, the one who brings healing, freedom and wholeness into our lives. So my encouragement today is to use this time to express your thankfulness to God. Thank Him for His forgiveness of sins. Thank Him for the victory He won on the cross for you. Thank Him for His scandalous grace and the unmerited favor that He's shown to us. Thank Him for His faithfulness. Thank Him that because of the victory Jesus won on the cross, you are forgiven, you're righteous, you're holy and justified. This is a time for us to celebrate and to express our thankfulness to God for all that Jesus has done for us. So let's eat and worship God with thankful hearts this morning. Amen.
My name is David Balestri. It's my honor today to lead us around the word. We're uh, jumping in this week into a new series. We're calling it Boom. Pastors Mark and Darlene several weeks ago really unpacked uh, what they believe was uh, the vision, a vision that God had given them for 2022 uh, as far as hope you see, as far as what God's intention for us in this year. Now, uh, it's interesting, this year has kicked off uh, with a bang in many respects. We, uh, m- for many nations, we're coming out of COVID seasons. We're coming out of some of these things. There, there seems to be uh, some clearing of the way forward after a couple of years of uh, some tumultuousness. And yet, you know, uh, in other areas, there is still some issues of disruption. And one of the challenges of that, of course, is that it can, in in times of uncertainty, it can actually cause us to pull back and begin to just go, well, maybe we need to kind of sit down and wait out another year uh, and see what happens. But actually, uh, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, our senior leaders have really felt from the Lord to say, hey, no, don't tell my people to sit back. Actually, tell them to come into 2022 with a great expectation. And this this word that really Pastor Mark felt, he, he felt in his spirit, was this word BOOM. And, and BOOM uh, is actually an acronym. And the acronym stands for Blessing, Opportunities, outpourings and miracles. And really the the exhortation we believe by the Spirit of the Lord to all of us is to actually not not, not, uh, go back, but actually step forward and really contend and believe God, position ourselves actually for blessing, opportunities, outpouring and miracles. I believe, we believe that 2022 can be, will be, a significant year, a year of kingdom advance, a year of kingdom blessing in your life. Today in this short message, I really wanna touch on this first part of BOOM, the B, which stands for blessing. I find it really interesting that you don't actually have to get too far into scripture 
before you're met with this concept or this thought of blessing and God wanting to pour out a blessing. Uh, let me show you in Genesis 1 verse 28, we're talking right at the creation account, right as God is speaking about His intention for humanity. I want to pick it up in, in, in uh, Genesis 1 28. It says, and God blessed them. This is in relation to mankind. And God blessed them. In the Amplifiers, it says, He granting them certain authority and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over or dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and everything that moves upon the earth. Isn't it so interesting that when God begins to think, uh, when, excuse me, when God thinks and creates humanity, His intention, His immediate intention is one of blessing. Now, you know, sometimes when people think about God or even, even people that have been brought up in different church circles, there can be this concept that God is this hard, judgmental, you know, kind of uh, this hard taskmaster that we need to do all that we can to somehow, I don't know, uh, coerce Him to, to, to bring some level of blessing upon our life. But that is not what the biblical witness tells us. The biblical witness tells us that God is a good Father and actually His intention for us is first and foremost that me, we might walk in blessing. Now, I find it really interesting because right at the start here, the blessing of the Lord is spoken within the context of His assignments, of His plans and purposes. So we can say this, the blessing of the Lord is in the earth. The blessing of the Lord is available to every man, woman and child. Now, even though it's available, we know, I mean, come on, we know that not everybody gets to partake deeply of the blessings of God. Now, uh, that I don't believe, by the way, that that's God being harsh. What I believe is that the blessings of the Lord are actually um, uh, assigned to the assignments of the Lord, the purposes of the Lord. So for us, it's not about trying to earn God's favour, God's blessing. No, 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 no. What it is, it's about coming into alignment by the Spirit of the Lord in God's best and God's intentions for us. We see this, by the way, the coming into alignment in the blessings of the Lord in, in one of the most famous accounts in the Old Testament, which is in Genesis 12, where we see God um, intersecting with the life of a man at that time who's called Abram, who eventually becomes Abraham. Now, before this time, Abram is actually a pagan worshipper. Uh, he's from Ur of the Chaldees and history uh, says to us that at the time when just before, as it were, before Abram has this encounter with the living God, with Yahweh, that actually Abram would have served. He was a, a, a polytheist. He, he was someone that would have served many gods. And Abram, it would have, would have been not unlikely that Abram would have served actually hundreds of gods, 200 gods to be exact. And so he has got, uh, Abram has this encounter. He's doing all he can, as it were, to try. Could you imagine uh, just what his life would have looked like, felt like, trying to appease, you know, these 200 gods? We see this in certain cultures. You know, I remember I had a friend who, uh, when I went to his place, uh, I went to his garage and they were of a certain faith. And I saw pictures of just different gods all through his garage. And I said to him, what, who are these? And he said to me, he said, these are the gods that my father comes and prays to. And his father was, just, I mean, there was ironically, right in the midst of all of those pictures, there was a picture of Jesus, of, you know, a portrait of, of what they felt Jesus would look like. So Jesus in that account was one of many gods and his father had, would spend his mornings trying to pray to, I mean, all these gods. Could you imagine the exhaustion of that? The reality is this, that God calls Abram to himself and calls him into this, this life, this, this uh, uh, place of blessing. Let, let me read it to you in Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. It says, Now in Haran, which is where Abram was living, the Lord said to Abram, Go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you abundantly and I will make your name great 
exalted and distinguished. Wow, that's amazing. Now listen to verse three, it says, and I will bless you. This is God's promise to Abram. He says, uh, so, uh, excuse me, and you shall be a blessing and a source of good to others. He says to him, I will bless you. I will do good for benefit those who bless you. And I will curse that is subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors, and has contempt for you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I love this thought that as sons and daughters of God today, right now, we actually are the carriers of the blessing of the Lord. Now, the blessing of the Lord, of course, ministers to our lives and has beautiful outworkings. We have the peace of God. We have the love of God. We have the assurance of His comfort. We have eternal assurance as far as just, you know, uh, knowing who we are and whose we are and where we're going and that, you know, this life isn't the end of all things. We have, that is such a blessing to walk with. We have, you know, the healing grace of the Lord upon our lives. We have His, His words of prosperity upon us. We have the favour of God. This is, I mean, you know, every believer, irrespective, by the way, of their current circumstances, uh, uh, should understand that we are blessing carriers. And, and that's amazing. We, we, we enter into that. But I love this thought here, that in the end of, uh, of verse 3, God says to Abram, and in you, I've blessed you with all of this abundance of myself and my goodness. And then he says, and he talks about, I bless you with protection, all the rest. And then in the end, he says, Abram, in you, this blessing in you, all the families of the earth will also be blessed. I love this thought. We're going to come in, we're coming into 2022. We are in 2022 into a time of great blessing. Yes, that great blessing is for us, for our family. It's for, for the immediacy of the situations around our lives. But what a great thought that actually... This blessing isn't just for us. It's actually something that we're blessed to be a blessing. I think this is powerful. I think that actually uh, this is biblical, that the blessing of the Lord should actually not be something that is just contained within the confines of my own heart or my own life, but actually God's desire is to so bless us that not only are we blessed, but we literally become a blessing agent. Can you think about that for a moment? A blessing agent. I'm talking about a blessing agent in your workplace, a blessing agent in your community, a blessing agent in your church, sure. But a blessing agent everywhere you go, a blessing agent in your business, if you're a business owner, a blessing agent in the school, if you're a school student. This, The blessing of the Lord, the richness of God actually becomes a a part of how we uh, share the gospel, how we uh, not only declare the good news, but actually manifest it in the earth as sons and daughters of God. We are the dispensers of God's blessing. Now let's just jump for a moment quickly to Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, we see Jesus um, about to send out the not just His 12 disciples, but a larger group of followers and he's about to send them out, as it were, on mission uh, to be a blessing into cities and towns. And here's, we'll pick it up from verse one. It says in the Passion Translation, it says, After this, the Lord Jesus formed 35 teams among the other disciples. He said, Each team has two disciples, 70 in all, and he commissioned them to go ahead of him into every town he was about to visit. And he, he released them with these instructions. He says, the harvest is huge. I mean, how many of you know the harvest is huge in front of us? In 2022, I, uh, as I pray, as I think about the kingdom of God, I think, God, the harvest is huge. He says, but there, the reality is, even back then, but there are not enough harvesters to bring it in. So then he says to them, as you go, plead with the owner of the harvest to send out many more workers into his harvest fields. Oh, you know, isn't that a beautiful prayer even right now? Father, we thank you that in 2022, Lord, the nations, the, the, our community, our cities, Lord, we need uh, blessing carriers, the, the, the harvest of, of souls, of men, women, children, uh, grandparents. Uh, uh, Lord, we, we thank you that the harvest is plentiful. There's, there's, 
many people that need to know your goodness and your grace. And today we pray, Lord, not only send us, but Lord, would you raise up harvesters? Would you awaken the ears and the eyes of every saint that no matter where they are, that they're actually ministers on assignment in the harvest field of the Lord. Amen. He says in verse three, now off you go. I'm sending you out, even though you feel as vulnerable as lambs in the pack of wolves. He says, verse four, you won't need to take anything with you. Trust in God alone. And don't get distracted from my purpose by anyone you might meet along the way. Verse five, once you enter a house, speak to the people there and say, God's blessing of peace is upon this house. I find this really interesting, this thought that says part of being blessing carriers is to realise that wherever we go, um, whatever workplace you walk into, it's like, well, you know, uh, uh, Dave, how how am I going to outwork this? You know, it's not like I can go to work and if I, you know, just, you know, preach Jesus to everyone. And um, well, you know, the reality is this, that actually... Uh, you carry the ble- you you carry the blessing of the Lord. You don't just declare it. In other words, you are the blessing of the Lord in your workplace. You are the blessing of the Lord in your school. You are the blessing of the Lord in your community. And that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you have to give everybody a, that you meet a John three sixteen uh, scripture. Well, you know what what it can mean is that in the ble- in excuse me in blessing, you maybe you're the person that's carrying peace. Maybe you're the person that's carrying kindness. Maybe you're the person that's carrying joy, even though the circumstances and the situation, everybody else is on edge, but all of a sudden you're carrying, as it were, this blessing of the Lord. I love it. It says here, um, it says uh, that the God, it says, and say, this is the declaration he told them to say when they walked into a house, God's blessing of peace be upon this house. Could you imagine? I remember uh, I was working for a multinational company. It was a really tough environment to work for. As far as being a Christian, it wasn't very conducive to that. But I, I remember the Lord really challenged me that as I would drive to work, He said, David, I want you to declare my peace. I want you to declare my blessing on your workplace so that as you walk in, you're actually walking into a space that you've declared blessing and peace. And you know, as I began to do that over, over a series of time, I began to see opportunities and things begin to shift, uh, opportunities to just, you know, minister appropriately, of course, in conversation and in influence and in impact into that workplace. And God really did some outstanding miracles uh, as a result there. In verse six, he says, if a lover of peace resides there, your peace or your blessing will rest upon that, that household. He says an interesting thing. He says, but if you are rejected, your blessing of peace will come back upon you. You know, the Bible says, or or what we're hearing here is that we are carriers of peace. And our job is to bring peace and blessing wherever we go. This blessing that we're, we're being invited into by the Lord, by, you know, by the prophetic apostolic declaration from our senior pastors to say, hey, God is going to bring us or bringing us into 2022 a boom year. We should have an expectation of blessing. The good news about it is this, that we are called to be a blessing, but we are, listen to this, what we're not responsible for is how people either receive or reject that blessing. Uh, uh, it's tough. I know I know what it's like, tough, when all of a sudden you're just trying to be an amb- a good ambassador of Christ. You, you're being fair and equitable. You, you, you're just being, you know, ethical in your workplace. And all of a sudden, sometimes you get pushback around that or, or even mocked around your stand for righteous things or whatever. And it, it can seem a bit harsh. You can even take that personal. But I just feel like, the, like there's, a, there's a scripture here. There's a verse here that we should really take on board, which is this. We are not in charge of of how people respond to our blessing. They can, some will receive it. Some will receive it and some will be blessed by it. Some will even uh, ask you about it deeper, about, hey, what's going on? How come you're so peaceful? How come come you always seem joyful? How come it seems like things work out for you? Or, you know, how come it seems like you tend to flourish in the midst of hard places and and all of a sudden they invite you to, to come deeper in with your blessing and your peace? Others actually go, will reject you and push you back. But the, the thing about this, the Lord says, actually, if that happens, 
It's okay. Let your blessing come back to you. Hold your peace. Let your blessing come back to you. Don't shut it up and go, well, that's it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to put myself out to be a blessing to anyone, you know, because I got rejected. Don't, don't be like that. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the blessing. And that's on them. That's not on you. I think that's really where that scripture here uh, encourages us. You know, it goes all the way through and we see that they, they go to these villages and then they come back rejoicing, saying, Lord, we, you sent us out to be a blessing and amazing things happen and they rejoice together. I, I just want to uh, quickly, what I want to do is I just want to end with a couple of points here, which is this thought about how can we display and dispense the blessing of the Lord in 2022? Well, the first thing that we need to do is absolutely embrace it. Say, God, in the midst of circumstances, doesn't, you know, in the midst of, you know, whether things are going well or bad, I'm blessed. I walk in the blessing of the Lord. That's something that, that should be a prayer. It should be a confession uh, that we say. I, I, I got to tell you, I, one of my patterns is I, as a dad, as a, as a husband, as a father, and now a grandfather, I make it a point that every day I speak a blessing over my wife and children. I'll give you an example of it. It's very, very easy. I used to say, Father, uh, I used to say, Father, I thank you. I'm blessed just like Abraham was blessed. I'm blessed with your blessing. And I speak a blessing on my wife, on my children, and then I name my children, on my sons and daughters-in-laws, and I name them, on my grandson, and I name him. And I just say, Father, I thank you. They're blessed. Wherever they go today, they're blessed. I declare uh, open doors. I declare expansion upon their lives. We speak this blessing out. I believe that one of the ways that we can be a blessing in this season, even now, you know, as a church, we're about to do the Can We Pray For You uh, series, uh, a um, um, project, excuse me. What, what is that? That's just looking for opportunities as we're speaking to people and they maybe they share something they're going through with us and this beautiful invitation that says, hey, I, I really hear you, you're under it there. Would you mind, could I pray for you right now? Or, you know, can, I, can we pray for you as a church? And so that's one of the ways that we can be a blessing. I think the other way that we can be a blessing, this is a real practical way. I know for us, what we do here, we've got a, and hope you see, we do a thing called Meals of Hope where we really just take a grocery bag and, and bless people with that, that are going through some things. You could be a blessing. Maybe you could be just that blessing and that thought that just goes, hey, I'm gonna, do something really practical, I'm going to bake a cake, I'm going to take a food parcel to someone, a neighbour, someone that's struggling, someone that's going through some stuff. What about this third, and this is the final one, what about this thought of be a blessing? What about I'm going to purpose that wherever it is that I'm working, wherever it is that I'm expressing life, I'm going to be the best student, I'm going to be the best employee, I'm going to be the best employer, like, like just being a blessing, just going actually the goodness of God, I'm going to manifest that in the marketplace, I believe that this is a year of boom. <laughs> and as we've been talking about blessing, that we can strongly enter into blessing. Let me just say a quick prayer as I close. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you right at the start, you declared that you wanted to bless humanity. Father, I thank. we thank you today. We thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you that they're deep and they touch every area of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that not only touch our lives, but you've also made us a blessing to others. Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you. Wow, church. What an incredible message this morning. I know that God's been talking to you this morning. And I just love the way that he's able to speak directly where you're at. You know, I just really believe that there's quite a few people watching here today or listening to these words. And it's not even just about today, but you've been sensing that Jesus has been knocking on the door of your heart. You haven't even been quite sure of what's been going on, but when I'm saying this to you right now, you're like, yes, that's what's been happening. Jesus has been knocking at the door of your heart. And I want to invite you that you can actually open that door of your heart up and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want you to come into my life. I want to live for you. I'm sick of doing my life by myself and doing it my own way. I want you to be Lord of my life. And I just really believe today that there are many of you that have just really felt something going on in your hearts. And this morning as I'm talking, today as I'm talking, 
there is a, just a really strong awareness. Today is a day for me to respond to Jesus. So would you close your eyes right now and just think about it. Jesus, I just pray for boldness over every person who needs to respond to you today. In Jesus' name, if you feel like today's the day for you to ask Jesus into your heart, I want you to click on that link that's on the screen right now. You can look in the chat. There's a link there. Just click on that and say, I want to follow Jesus. And as you do that right now, you'll just get to fill out some details. And then we want to follow you up and see how we can encourage you in your walk with Jesus. But when you ask Jesus into your heart, the Bible says that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Would you pray this prayer after me, which will be inviting Jesus into your heart? Jesus, I am sorry for the things I've done wrong. I turn away from them and I ask for your forgiveness. I want to allow you to come into my heart, to be Lord of my life, to be King of my heart. I want to follow you from this day forward. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising again from the dead. I believe that you are Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you mean it, would you click on that link today and we want to connect with you. Bless you, church.
You know what makes Such I love that we can come together as an online church community yeah. and yes. hear an incredible message like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we would love you to actually do something today that activates your faith and positions your heart, church, to be continually receiving the Word of God. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel come by on. clicking that little button up there. All sorts of goodies on there. That's right. It'll Praise, update you every worship, time. Yes. Messages. Oh, come on. It's so good. It's got, it's got the whole lot. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But why don't we speak the blessing together? But before we yes. do that, make yes. sure you stick around and chat in the chat. chat As in the I've chat. been told, it's a lot of fun. It is. Yes, you can share what God's really dropped on your heart and connect with our online community. You ready? I'm ready. Are you ready, church? You kick us off. Okay, let's go. I I pray pray that that God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy. joy. Then we will overcome hope through the power power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 We love you, church. We'll see you next week.